Hey there, welcome to Toy Talk with Mike and Chad, episode 14. I'm Mike. I'm Chad. And the toys we're going to be talking about today are my latest purchases. We can talk about your latest purchases mm-hmm. too, even though you forgot to bring them. Although I know it's a pain in the ass hauling them to and from. It's, it's okay. Um, and we're also going to talk about um, Hascon Day 2. Because when you were here on the weekend, we talked about all the reveals that t- occurred on Day 1, mm-hmm. which was Transformers and Marvel Legends mm-hmm. primarily. And then Day 2 was Star Wars and G.I. Joe. But that happened after we shot. So we'll talk about that. Um, so yeah, do you want to start there? Sure, let's do it. Okay. Um, so I, I made a little note of everything that came out. So before we get to G.I. Joe and... What else? Star Wars? Um, they have revealed a couple little things even since then for Transformers. There's a new uh, a new spaceship called Galaxy Shuttle that's coming out. He's like a repaint of Astro Train. Uh, do you know Astro yep. Train? Yeah, so like, I don't know who this Galaxy Shuttle guy is. He's from one of the like other Transformers realities that I don't really follow. Um, so, I, you know, maybe he's a cool reveal to some. I don't know why they waited a day or two after they did a, two days of reveals. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. So, in case you rely on us as your only source of toy news, which you shouldn't, there's also a rocket ship coming in. Um, also, on Marvel Legends, so both we talked about both of these things, but we talked about that uh, the fact that they had announced a long shot mm-hmm. solo figure, and I was torn because there's a box set with Longshot, Mojo, and Dazzler. Dazzler I already have two versions of. I don't have a Mojo or a Longshot. I really want the Longshot. So I thought, well, the single pack version is an excuse to at least get Longshot at a reasonable price. But then it did kind of... It kind of gave me an out to not buy Mojo and the best Dazzler figure they've ever produced, which I kind of didn't... I kind of didn't want an out. I kind of wanted to be forced to buy. Anyway, they've since announced... A Mojo solo pack figure. You saw that. Which we figured they would. Yeah, but now I'm really... T- so the Mojo... Because <laughs> the long shot's like 30 bucks. Yeah. And the Mojo is like 60 bucks. So you get the two of them for 90 And then I think the three pack is like 150 So really you're paying 60 bucks for the Dazzler. Now, you could argue, there's like a little mini Wolverine in there and some other accessories, but I don't care about that other fluff. It's basically the Dazzler. So it's like I either buy Mojo and Longshot separate for 90 or get the pack for 150 And uh, it sounds like it should be an easy decision, but like Dazzler's my favorite X-Men. And bo- okay. both the ones they put out so far have left me wanting a little bit. Uh, so this is the best one. So yeah, I don't know if she's worth 60 bucks to me, but... But really, it's just a new head sculpt. Otherwise, it's the same figure I've previously gotten. But anyway, any thoughts on that? I don't know too much about those characters. Um, Fair enough. Interested to see what you do, though. And the other thing I speculated, and it wasn't my speculation per se. I was just kind of reporting what somebody else had guessed at online. But with that Ghost Rider car yeah. for the Hazlab, they said that. Future tiers would include other demonic Marvel characters. Mm -hmm. And somebody had guessed that they were going to include Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen. So we talked about that in our last one when it was still just speculation. The next day they announced it as a tier. And what's interesting, too, is so... Just a very quick recap how it works. It's kind of like a Kickstarter. They have this Ghost Rider car. They're not even going to make it unless they hit the 9,000. And then they announced if they hit 12,000, they would give you uh, a Mephisto figure. And then usually how these things work is if you hit 15,000, then they give you something else. If you hit 17,000, you get something else. Anyway, when they announced the Goblin Queen, they they said she was the $10,000 tier. Okay. So they injected her in between tiers. The tiers. So I kind of feel like that's maybe them scrambling like this thing isn't selling as fast so they're kind of like here's an extra incentive and they didn't want to put it too far out that people would think was unrealistic right so you'll we're going to get her before we even get mephisto if Mm. if it funds um i'm still not convinced on buying this it's we're 
It's, it's about five hundred dollars Canadian. Yeah. And I'd basically be getting three figures on a car, and the car I don't really want. Um, now, before we move on to GI Joe and Star Wars, I can hear Casey scratching at the door, so I think we're gonna have a guest star again for another episode. So I'll be right back. Casey, come on, come on, Casey. Come here to the door. And we're back with Casey. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us, Casey. Okay, so. I probably have more to say about the G.I. Joes than you do. So, why don't, if you remember the Star Wars characters, do you want to talk about... Uh, yeah, yeah, so I I think we put out the wish list, and I didn't know that some of them were already announced or like out there to purchase. So, I was like, oh my god, all my predictions were right. I can't believe I called that. <laughs> um, in fact, it was just the... The Ewok. The Ewok that I got right. Yeah. So, like in our last episode, we were talking about, it and you were like, "Oh, I really hope they do an Ewok. I want them to re-release Chewbacca. I want them to yeah. re-release the the Cantina Band. Or one, yeah. I want them to put out a Destro." And then uh, after the video, you messaged me, and you're like, "I predicted the future. Half of that stuff's come out." I'm like, "That's because it was already out. Yeah, it was already announced." Yeah. Uh, Make sure you uh, fade in that conversation too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Casey, stop licking me. Come on. Anyway. So, yeah, so the Wicket of the Ewok, so they're making him. So he's cute. Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to him because he's, like, my favorite movie was Empire Strikes Back. But I also had a soft spot for Return of the Jedi because I was a fan of the Ewoks. And, you know, there was that Ewok cartoon back in the 80s, so... Yeah, yeah, the Ewok movies. The Ewok movies. And Can't forget those. I used to collect the Ewok comic book. Yeah. Which was based, based on the cartoon version of it. But, uh, yeah. But as we predicted, um, like, Wicked comes by himself. Yeah. So you're not really getting $40 worth of no, action figures. definitely not. He's probably going to be right, the same licking. size as the Jawa. Stop it. <laughs> stop it with the licking. Stop. <laughs> anyway... Casey loves me. Yeah, this is going to turn into some weird fetish video. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Yeah. Chill. Um, so then otherwise, I, the only one I wrote down, so I wrote down Wicked, because I think he is really the only unique, new, like, original trilogy character. There was a bunch of re-releases, I think, like, characters like Chewbacca that they're releasing on the vintage card backs, but they're yes. previously released figures that used to come in the boxes. And then the other thing, a bunch of new characters, all from, like, Andor. Yeah. Are you interested in any of the Andor characters? Um, I don't think so right now, because I haven't built up that connection with them. I'm a couple episodes behind uh, in the show, so... Yeah, I just watched episode five before you came over. Yeah, I watched the first three, and then I think I'm going to wait, like, two weeks yeah. to catch up so that I don't have to wait... I really love it, although I acknowledge that it's not moving very fast. No. Um, but, yeah, I, I kind of just love how serious the tone mm-hmm. is and the slow build. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. But, yeah. uh, but I like the first three. But Although they were slow. but They're slow. But as I've talked about, every time I talk about Black Series on this channel, I say, like, I've broken this rule more times than I'm happy with, but my rule was with Black Series... Aliens. Aliens, and robots. robots, you know, stormtroopers, cool guys, and I don't need to buy a bunch of humans wearing like jean jackets. And it seems to be I, I have quite a few of them. And with this, most of the new figures they announced, like it was a new version of Cassian. It was the chick from the first three episodes that helps him get off planet. Right. It's the version that you wanted of Cassian. To, yeah, well, to not like the. But I got that other version of Cassian that came out a little while ago. Yeah. Right? With the, so there's a third version of him now. So the first one was Wintercoat. That Wintercoat I didn't, didn't, like. didn't want. Then I got the one from, that just came out mm. a couple of months ago, and now there's this new one. Uh, I don't need the new one now that I have that one. Right. Um, and then there's, like, the old guy that kind of recruits him, and then I think there's the young version of Mon Mothma. Mon Mothma. So it's all these human characters, so nothing to get excited about at all for me. So anything more on Star Wars, or...? I don't think so. Not for me. Okay. 
So G.I. Joe. So from we did talk about it a little bit, but they did reveal that Serpentor and they yeah. they put that up. That was a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, it was any of those exclusives go up for such a brief window. Yeah. I missed it. I missed it. Yeah. So uh, I don't have Serpentor. I'm not too worried about it. Um, cause historically I've been able to get every GI Joe thus far. I've had to work for it cause they've had Amazon exclusives, Target exclusives, Hasbro Pulse exclusives, you know, and it's just somehow I still managed to find everything without breaking the bank or it doesn't take me years to get them. So I'm sure I'll get Serpentor eventually. Either they'll re-release it or they'll re-release it with out the chariot at regular retail. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So, but he looks cool. Um... So they also showed, and these figures went up for pre-order that day. Yeah. So Cover Girl, uh, the Cobra Bat in red, which yeah. I think they call the Crimson, Crimson Bat. Crimson Bat. Um, the Barbecue repainted in the Slaughter's Marauders colors, the blues and green and brown. Uh, Lieutenant Falcon, mm-hmm. Outback, um, and this is no surprise because they previously released... The Tiger Force Outback, and now they're releasing the regular version of Outback. So kind of backwards, but as soon as they put out that Tiger Force one, we knew that was coming. Same as um, they showed some digital mock-ups of characters that are coming, and one of them was regular Bazooka in his yeah. red football jersey. Again, that was no surprise because they previously had put out his Tiger Force version, so we knew that was coming. They also showed Rock and Roll, Torpedo. Uh, Copperhead and Shipwreck. Yes. So, any of those guys get you excited? Any of those guys you're going to pick up? Uh, yeah, because I went home right away and visited Big Bad Toy Store online mm-hmm. and pre-ordered <laughs> pre-ordered three of them. I got Cover Girl, uh, the Marauder, Barbecue, Barbecue. Yeah, sorry, and the uh, Crimson Bat, and. What was it? Two days later, I think I found them on Amazon and canceled the Big Bad Toy Store because they were a little cheaper. Um, and then you're not going to have to pay potential custom fees or. Yeah, they're also shipping. up on the GameStop website. Yeah. Too. So I was excited to get those. I'm not some sort of like GI Joe poser. Like, like I know Mike collects those, so I'm going to start collecting those. Um, I watched the cartoon when I was younger. Yeah. I did watch the movies. I had some G.I. Joe figures, but I'm just going for the cool-looking figures, so I'm not a compl- I, I won't be a completist with this. That's what I said about Star Wars. Yeah. It? But, uh, well, yeah, I, like, what, even if these were your first G.I. Joes, like, the brand needs new blood. Yeah. Um, and this, this is why I think it has struggled in past years when they try and relaunch it. They either changed it too much for things like Sigma 6 and stuff, if you remember that. Yeah. And that they they didn't win over enough kids, and the collectors, the old fans, didn't embrace it. And then they, sometimes they stick too faithfully to the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale that the collectors love, but kids don't gravitate towards it. I think Classified is hitting that sweet spot where it's like, they look pretty close to the vintage toys, mm-hmm. but they're tweaking them, making them a little bit more modern. They've got, you know, kind of modern sensibilities. They look bigger and brighter and i think they're attracting not just new kids but some new adults to it and uh As some man children um snake uh snake eye storm shadow was also always my favorite ninja yeah um so i found him i was looking for him for a while not the uh, snake eyes version but the real version yeah and Found him randomly on Amazon, so I was like, "Cool!" So he, I think he was forty-one, yeah, ninety-nine. So I was like, "You know what? I'll pay for that." So have you got um, him yet, or is he coming? No, he should be here tomorrow. He's slated for delivery uh, tomorrow. Um, but I was at Toys R Us today, yeah, just after work, checking some stuff out, and I was looking through the GI Joe classified series, and way in the back, tucked to the side, was. Mm. Storm Shadow. Oh, yeah? I was like, huh. Would have saved, would have saved some time, but I'm yeah. in no rush. Um, but I've just never seen him in the wild. That's why I was kind yeah. of impressed. Because it's usually just a shit ton of roadblocks and uh, bareness. Yeah, like the movie figures. Yeah. Yeah, the movie figures are clogging up all the shelves around here. Probably everywhere, but... 
Um, so besides the... So those figures that they put up for pre-order, which are pretty much, you know, they're going to be coming soon. Mm-hmm. Then there was the digital renders, which are figures that are probably coming next year. And then they lastly, they show just the names of characters that are coming, like the, what they call pipeline releases. So they revealed the Cobra Snow Serpent, Buzzer the Dreadnought, and Female Cobra Troopers. So I don't know if you saw that. but they, I didn't. Yeah, so they just give the names of those characters that are they're coming. So... All those are ones I'm looking forward to. The Snow Serpent, you know what he looks like? He was... Oh, God. I can't I can't remember. He's a fan favorite. Like, he's a cobra. But he's he's all, got the parka, right? Yeah, he's all white. He's all bundled up. He's got this kind of, like, mask on. He's got, like, fur collar. He's got snowshoes. He's got a yeah. rocket launcher. He comes with a lot of gear all strapped to him. Uh, he's going to look really nice in it's this. the balaclava, right? The... Face mask? No, it's... I don't know how I would describe that thing. Almost kind of like a hockey mask style, like old school, like gold okay. mask. Okay, okay. Um, like, it's got some breathing slits, and, mm-hmm. like, uh, it's it's black, and surrounded by, like, kind of white, and... Uh, okay. You might be able to see them. I've got one, some version of them on my shelf over there, but you might not... I vaguely, I vaguely remember. Yeah. But uh, that just kind of got me thinking, because, like, they keep telling us Joes that are coming. And I was just curious. I wanted to see if I could find a list online of all the ones they've announced. And so, this line is relatively new. I think 2020 was the first year that we got figures. Um, I just did a count before you got here. I have 47 G.I. Joe classified figures already. Which, to me, it doesn't feel like a lot. But in all the years that I collected G.I. Joe toys when I was a kid, I probably only had about like maybe 60, at best, figures in my shoebox full of G.I. Joe's. And it's like, in three years, like, I've almost surpassed that, and they still feel they just scratched the surface. A lot of those are repaints, like, I have four snake eyes and all that sort of stuff, but... So besides that, I also have pre-orders that are going to be here any time now for Tomax, Zaymont, Sergeant Slaughter, Stalker. So there's all these other guys in the pipeline, all those uh, Tiger Force guys I mentioned, Outback, Bazooka. But besides all that, so here's the full list of the pipeline joes that are are coming so rock and roll shipwreck copperhead torpedo we knew i just mentioned those guys then there's snow job tunnel rat grunt scrap iron ripper firefly which they've already done so i don't know maybe Mm -hmm. that's a new version of firefly uh low light big ben range viper televiper with trouble bubble hawk tripwire snow serpent buzzer and the female cobra troopers so like that's a that's a lot of Joes to expect. Those will probably all be 2023 releases, and it's going to be a busy year for G.I. Joe. I might find some new favorites. Yeah. Um, now, before we move off of G.I. Joe, this is, that's actually maybe a good transition. Um, so now we're going to move from talking about Hascon to talking about my new figures and doing yeah. some reviews. Is there anything more on Hascon you had? or No. Or I know there was some new... Todd McFarlane multiverse news. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. Uh, about Robin? Yeah. Well, not just Robin. I saw there were some new reveals today. Did you see those? No, not yet. Yeah, there was a, there was a half dozen or a dozen new reveals today, I think, of new figures. In the multiverse. Yeah, multiverse. And they also, not so separate from the multiverse, but also from it's, McFarlane toys. Yeah, yeah. Mo- movie maniacs are coming yeah. back. And it was an intro, like, Movie Maniacs before was always, like, Mm horror-based, but the ones they showed, I think, was, like, Bugs Bunny and, like, the Wicked Witch from, like, Wizard of Oz. So, like, they're definitely not, they're branching out from just horror now. It's actually just movies, so. Great, something else I can collect and get charged an arm and a leg for. Yeah. I think uh, the only McFarlane release that I saw was the Robin, the Tim Drake Robin. Hmm. Um, I didn't catch any of them today. Well, there was some, like, Batman Begins, like, that world, Dark Knight movie figures coming out, like Christopher Nolan movies. And uh, there was a new set of page punchers, which are the six inches that come with the comic book, so there's some new ones of those. Anyway. I'll check it out when I go home, but... That's, okay. that's good to know. Alright. Got the dog tucked away behind me here. So, with this kind of little miscellaneous mishmash I have here beside me, all I was going to talk about was figures that I didn't have enough of that brand to do a whole video yeah. of. So, originally, I had a couple of G.I. Joes here that I was going to talk about. 
But I've since got a couple more G.I. Joes, and I kind of figure maybe I'll leave them out of this episode, yep. and I'll do a separate episode on them later. But one thing I wanted to mention is I just, just yesterday, got ugh, the Crimson Guard. So... Nice. Yeah, and I ordered two of them. With any of the trooper types, I always order two um, because I know my brother Doug is probably going to want to take one off my hands. But if he doesn't, I have no problem just adding it, you know, having two of them on my collection. So I did the same with the Bat and the Alley Viper and the Cobra Officer. But so far, Doug has taken me up on every single one. So he'll probably buy that off of me, too. But, uh, so I, I got this guy yesterday and I opened him up last night. And I was like playing around with him and he's really cool. Um, and Vanessa came down and she was talking to me. She's like, oh, is that one of your new figures? Are you going to open them both? And I was like, well, no, because I'm going to sell that to Doug. And I'm like, and he, as much as it's nice to kind of, you know, Doug will come over tomorrow and give me my 40 bucks and I've got a little extra drinking money this weekend. It's still kind of, these things, you can't just run out to the store and buy these guys. Right. Like, win right now. And <coughs> it's kind of painful to give one away. I'm like, I kind of want to keep both. Like, I like them so much. I think they'd look cool standing on, on, each, side side. on each side of Cobra Commander, kind of yeah. flagging them. And uh, she's like, well, why don't you just keep it then? I'm like, no, you know, I'm, if Doug wants it, I want, I want to give it to him. But I was like, and besides, the, they're probably going to re-release this guy down the road. They've been, they've been pretty bad at, or good, however you want to look at it, of re-releasing characters and repaints. And they've been doing the Python Patrol figures. Yep. And there is a Python Patrol version of uh, the Crimson Guard in the Vintage line. So I'm sure they'll eventually redo him in like yellow Python Patrol colors. But now here's a couple of Crimson Guards from the what we call like the uh, modern line of like the four inch line from a few years back. So that's a standard Crimson Guard. And then they re-released him with the new paint job. You notice here he's got like a silver face instead of a black face. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's essentially the same figure. Just one of them is kind of an officer right. and one's kind of not. So he's got the black, so are you thinking they'll put him out in the gray? So I was saying to Vanessa, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let Doug have this one because I bet you they'll probably release him with a silver face. Today, the silver faced one went up for pre order. <laughs> so, like, again, same thing. They just did their HasCon, Has-Con. where they told you all these new G.I. Joes come out. You know, there's like, you know, 20 Joes lined up that, on that list I just told you to expect. And then today, out of nowhere, they announced that they're doing retro carded versions of Crimson Guard and Snake Eyes. And they were they went up for sale on Hasbro Pulse while I was working today and they sold out before I even noticed they were there. I was able to go on to Walmart.ca and order the silver face version of him and he's gonna come on that big, you know, retro card back. The Snake Eyes was sold out. But the Snake Eyes So you're familiar with Snake Eyes' two core yeah. looks, are you, yeah. right? Yeah. He's got his commando look, which is kind of the goggles, mm-hmm. and then he's got the ninja look, which is the visor. So I have three or four variations of visor snake eyes already. The only version of commando snake eyes they put out came with the wolf timber and mm-hmm. the tooth pack. And uh, I don't know what it was, but when I got that snake eyes, I was a little underwhelmed by it. Like, some people were really excited, saying, like, oh, this is going to be the toy of the year. You know, everybody likes Commando Snake Eyes. But I was like, I don't know. It's just, I'm tired to get excited about the Snake Eyes. It wasn't really grabbing me. And so when I first saw this retro-carded Commando Snake Eyes, I was like, okay, well, I didn't love that figure the first time. I don't need it now just because it's probably going to have just a slight paint variation. But upon closer inspection, this is a new figure. So, like, if you look at... And I'll put the shots up so you guys can see what I'm showing Chad right now. But so that is, like, the new one. Mm-hmm. And that's the one I have. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's a new head sculpt that he's got, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The head looks to be a different shape. And he, also, like, this guy's got kind of, like, a cable knit sweater underneath. The, this new one has got, like, a smooth yeah, torso that's definitely and stuff. A new figure. So, you know, he, I'm sure he shares a lot of the same parts. But it looks like a new head and uh, new torso and... It looks superior, and now I feel like now I have to get another Snake Eyes. But unfortunately, he was sold out, so I'll have to bide my time and hopefully get him eventually. But that's just uh, the only reason I'm mentioning this now because I'm going to review him in a future episode. But just to illustrate how frustrating it is that like we just had this big announcement, like here's everything that's coming out, 
And then not like literally a day goes by and a new figure is announced and says, come on. Anyway, look, I'm getting another phone call interrupting our episode. My brother's calling. I'll answer this and I'll be right back. Hey. Hello. What's up? Not much. Hey. Eh, not much. You caught me right in the middle of a video. Oh, I was like making a YouTube video. Why you answer? Well, because I'm shooting it on my tablet, so my tablet's like vibrating with your little face popping up on it, saying Brian Highland is calling you. So. Well, wait. So are we still on the video? Should, we, should I go on speaker? Well, I, we technically we are on video still, and you are on speaker. Chad is here with me, my co-host. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, hey, Chad. So, yeah. I could leave it. I'm going to edit this out, but I can leave a snippet of you in there if you want to say hello to my audience. <laughs> I almost did that. <laughs> I'll let you guys get to it. Okay, so that was... Uh, I know I just finished a whole lot of talking about my brother, Doug. That was my younger brother, Brian, calling from Miami, or God knows wherever he is in the world at this moment in time. But... Uh, Anyway, it's great having a brother that lives in the States because when there are Walgreens and Target exclusives, uh, he often can find that stuff for me. And when some of those Tiger Force G.I. Joes came out, uh, they were announced months ago. And they went up for pre-order on Target's website. They haven't shipped them yet. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't able to order them on Target's website to ship to Canada because they only ship to the, US. In the States. So I ordered and I paid for them, but I put my brother's address in there. So hopefully they ship before Christmas because he'll be coming up here on Christmas and he can bring them with him so uh yeah he's a he's handy for that reason um so yeah I want to talk about new toys I bought first one I want to talk about is I got a new reaction figure you can see I've opened him up here so this is Leonardo reaction figure I have to be mindful when I'm putting things down here I don't know if you've noticed in the video sometimes when I I throw things down or you put our phones down the microphone is right here and it it yeah, wouldn't. that's why I started keeping my phone in my pocket because I usually put it on this yeah, thing and you hear the buzzing and the beeping. So I apologize for if I'm a little reckless putting things down like that. But uh, you guys well know I've been collecting reaction figures pretty vigorously lately. I, I've been buying them for years, but it's in the last two or three years they've really kind of become one of my core collections. And I've rubbed off on you. Yeah, so Jesus. I had... No intention of collecting them. Like, I think they're cool. And then Toys R Us had a 30% off sale on the Super 7 reaction figures. So mm -hmm. I was in there one day and I was like, oh, look, I can finally get my Destro because Destro was my favorite character. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't stop at Destro. Then I got Never does. Baxter Stockman. I got a Foot Soldier. Then I got... Cobra Commander, Duke, Lady J, uh, the Mustache, Navy Sailor. I got the... Oh, God. But you got a few. Anyway. Anyways, I have like 12 of them now, so I'm like, motherfucker. So yeah. that was all within the span of like three or four days. And, uh, like, I'm all in when it comes to the reaction G.I. Joe yeah. and Transformers. I buy a lot of little oddities. Um, Ninja Turtles is not one of the lines that I went very deep on. I got the four turtles, Bebop and Rocksteady, and that's kind of where I wanted to draw the line there. Um, however, when you, you literally text me, like, I think three times in two days to say, I'm at yeah. Toys R Us, I bought more of them, I bought a yeah. couple more of them. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, man, he's really taking advantage of this sale. I'm like, and I feel like I want to go buy something, even though there was nothing. Jackass! Else. Yeah, so I went in there, and the only figure that they had that I was interested in really was the Samurai Leo. Yeah. And this is one I might not typically have bought because, look, your white shirt serves as a good little backdrop there. Perfect. Right. Um, because as a kid, I thought it was so stupid that they kept dressing the Ninja Turtles in stupid yeah, outfits. Yeah, it never made sense to me. Like Surfer. Yeah, Surfer, and even worse when they were dressed up like Spock and Dracula, yeah. like all kinds of stupid stuff. Um, Baseball Leo. Yeah, and I just had no... I had the four original Turtles when I was a kid, and that was it. I never wanted any other outfits. So things like this did not resonate with me, and I don't have any nostalgic ties to it. Um, however, I do collect, or at least I was collecting, the Super 7 Ultimates line of Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. which are the 7-inch, super detailed, and they look really nice. Yeah. 
Um, like I have all four Turtles and Bebop, Rocksteady, Shredder, Baxter, a couple other guys, and I really like them. And then they put out Samurai Leo in the Ultimates, and I was like, that looks way better than I remember the vintage toy looking when I was a kid. Like he actually looks cool in samurai armor and the, the metallic kind of paint they were using and everything and i was really tempted to buy it i had it in my like cart and took it out and i was like oh hummed and hot about it but ultimately i've complained about this plenty lately the price of these things is about 75 dollars canadian a pop and i was like no it's it wouldn't make sense because i don't intend to buy a secondary raf and donatello right, yeah. so i'd have the four turtles and then one extra leonardo at that price point and everything, I just it didn't make sense to me, so I decided not to do it. So when I saw this guy there, I'm like, this this figure isn't nearly, it's not executed nearly as well as the ultimate version, but uh, it does kind of scratch that itch for a samurai. Like Leo. fifteen bucks too, thirty percent off. It was yeah great, which is what these figures should be in yeah, the first place. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, so he's pretty cool. You know, add him to the mix. And, uh, yeah, I'll, pl- I'll plug in pictures of all the ones that you got as well, but, uh, they're fun. Yeah, so, 30% off, Mom, in case you're watching. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wasn't a lot. Yeah, um, uh, so yeah, I love the card art on these guys. As I've told you before, I usually kind of cut the bubble so I can, I could put the figure back in the bubble and display it up on my wall if I wanted to, but, uh. For the sake of storage, I've even had to start cutting off those bubbles because I can't store. I don't have enough room on my wall for all of these things, and when I start storing them, they they take up so much more room yeah. to try and keep with the bubble. Now I have a question for you: When you go to buy these mm-hmm. in stores, do you look for like the best carded one? No, no, I wouldn't buy one that was like super bent. damaged. But like sometimes you get them and they kind of curve a little here. Yeah, like, I, I open them up, ultimately. Yeah. So, uh... I'm just saying where you pin them. Yeah. On the wall. Yeah, it depends. Like, if, if for an impulse buy like this, if I knew I was buying this to pin it up on my wall, even if I was going to open it and pin, put the card up, if it was it had a big giant crease in half, then I would either say, well, I'm buying this and it's not going on my wall, or if the whole purpose was to kind of buy something from my wall, then I wouldn't buy it. But typically, like, if I order these online, they show up with the corners bent and stuff, I don't lose any sleep over it mm-hmm. because I'm just like, whatever. Um, like, that's what a lot of people were complaining. And when I saw, I learned about the Crimson Guard silver repaint on Facebook. And by the time I'd seen it, you know, like I said, it was too late. It was already sold out. And there was already, like, 300 comments on there. And the comment I saw over and over and over again were people complaining, like, I would pre-order these retro cards from Walmart.com, but... Walmart is notorious for mailing them out in like Crappy. in envelopes, and the cards get all yeah. bent and warped. And the GI Joe cards are on the flimsiest little cardboard; it's practically paper. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it sucks for people that want these mint cards as collectibles because Hasbro and Walmart together are not doing collectors any favors by putting out shoddy cards and treating them like junk. So anyway, um. I got a new Star Wars figure. I know we talked about all our Star Wars figures. Yeah. And then I got this one, so she's kind of a outlier. So I figure I'll just lump her into this video. So this is a new Princess Leia figure. Now, I actually think the likeness to Carrie Fisher is pretty good. But if you're wondering, like, when did she wear this? She didn't in the yeah. movies. This is based on her look from the Marvel comic book series that ties into the movies. And... Uh, it's drawn by one of my favorite artists, Terry Dodson. And I actually would have been stoked if they had kind of leaned more into Terry Dodson's artwork and made her a little bit more stylized. Mm. But then she probably would have stood out like a sore thumb from the other Black series because they're all like based on actors' likenesses. Right. They even did the same on characters that have only ever appeared in the cartoons. Rather than lean into the animated look, they kind of try and make them look as if they were real people, like the characters from Rebels and all that sort of stuff. So I think that's what they've done there. Even though this character is based on the Princess Leia from the comic books, they took it and they tried to say, what if Carrie Fisher actually wore that outfit? And they kind of put her here. And I think it's the best Princess Leia. Stellar job on it, yeah. Yeah, like the face, the digital face painting is really nice. Um, I just like the outfit because she's got, she's like action ready. She's not wearing a dress or a skirt or anything. I like the shawl here. It's, it's plastic. It's pliable plastic rather than like, 
soft goods and stuff. I think that kind of works. It, it gives it some weight and everything too. I like the holster there and everything with the separate pistol. Just a cool figure. I'm pretty happy with it. Any, any other thoughts? No, I like her. All right. Um, really quickly on this guy, I was I was going through a little phase where I was buying dinosaurs. Again, I try not to buy. I don't consider myself a Jurassic World collector by any means. But the new movie came out, which kind of sucked, by the way. And But I did want the new dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. I love dinosaurs, and when they introduce cool new dinosaurs, I want them. So from the new movie, the big ones were the... There is an Asaurus, the thing with the big Wolverine claws, and I've got him. And then I wanted that furry, you know, feathered raptor, yeah. the pyro raptor. But he wasn't, they didn't make a figure of him until the second wave of figures. So I saw him the other day. I picked up the pyro raptor. It's like a, it's an okay figure for, like, he's only cost me like 15 bucks. So th- you're not getting a whole lot for it. He's articulated at the neck, on the tail, the legs. His arms go in and out and everything. Uh, he's got this weird battle damage function, which is strange. So I don't know if he's got wounds on both sides of him. And if you hit this button on the back, the the wound inside goes from bright red to darker red. So I think it's like, how deep is the wound? <laughs> is it like, is it just surface level or is this going to kill him? Like, that's kind of a weird feature. I would almost think you would go from like, smooth and then hit a button and flip to having a scar but the fact that he's battle damaged regardless and it's just like you can barely even see in there the color yeah change. so that must have been the one that was fighting the t-rex near the end yeah it's a silly function yeah spoiler um, alert <laughs> and no he doesn't fight because the, the theras and, and the gigantosaurus and the t-rex that fight at the end this guy was just the guy on the ice oh he, yeah okay so, mind. so yeah he just went on the ice and he did some split. i kind of tuned that move <laughs> His, his jaws articulated and stuff, which I like, but his legs are pretty lackluster in yes. that he's only got the one joint at the top of the leg, so as soon as you move his leg, um, like, now his foot is all jacked up, like, he can't alter his feet, so you almost have to keep his legs in one standard position for him to, like, stand properly. That's kind of annoying. So, it's kind of lacking, so... It's an okay figure, but actually, I, I forgot, to, I was gonna forget to talk about this, but since you reminded me, so... Of the from this new movie, Therizinosaurus wanted him, got him. Pyroraptor wanted him, now I got him. The other one was the big new bad guy, the Gigantosaurus. Yeah. Now he's not as unique looking because I couldn't tell you the difference between him and a T Rex or a you know what an Allosaurus or what like they're all one of those big bipedal dinosaurs. Except he's green and he's a little spikier. His head's a little smaller than a T Rex and. Anyway, so I thought if they made an affordable version of him, I would buy him as well. Because I do have the T-Rex, and I do have the Indominus Rex. Mm -hmm. So I have the big bads from the other movies. So I went to Toys R Us, and he wasn't included in Wave 1, but they do have the new dinosaurs now, hence this one. And they had the Gigantosaurus. Now, I don't think I would have bought him anyway, because he was like in the $85 range or something. He's big, you know. And he's cool, but I was like, ooh, that's pretty pricey. But also, he has the weirdest play feature, and I'll put I'll put it in here. I'll, but I'll show you here, Chad. Just he um, you press a button on him, and he's got this weird joint in the middle of him, and his body oh. just thrashes around like he's having a seizure or something. Like it doesn't look like a believable thrashing but it also it just it's a really awkward joint yeah that too. looks terrible so when you, even if you want him to just be standing still his his upper body is kind of just like gimpy hanging like this and then when you press the button he kind of does this yeah. but it's like that doesn't look scary or like i'm worried about him when i see him do i'm it. not a fan of that figure but like he looks cool he, he looks cool he looks cool just that middle joint but yeah that looks... little that middle joint and it's not a, like a tight joint so no, even when you're not pressing loose. the button it's just like it wobbles around and it really kind of ruins, like, if I was going to drop 85 bucks on it, I don't want a figure that's all gimpy like that. Like, So, I don't know. Weird decision. All right, moving on. I just got this guy. So this is a Gundam from the Gundam Universe line. Um, I'm not big into Gundams. you have much Gundam experience? 
I mean, I watched it when I was younger. But That's more than I did. Yeah. I don't know anything about Gundam, really. I, the only anime that I ever really watched was Robotech. Mm-hmm. I loved that when I was a kid. And I didn't know anything about Gundam, even though it's been around since, like, the 70s. But in the 90s, um, Bandai started importing yeah. little three and three quarter inch figures of these cool looking mech robots. And I was like, well, those are cool. And in the 90s, there was really nothing else to collect. Like, there was no more G.I. Joe. There wasn't even really Transformers. There was, like, Beast Wars stuff. But no. And so I started collecting these guys. And I built a nice little collection of probably 30 or 40 little Gundam guys. But I really don't know anything about their backstory and all that sort of stuff. And then that kind of fizzled out and went away. And I hadn't really thought about them for a while. Most of the Gundams they sell in North America now are model kits that you have to snap together yourself, and I have no interest in doing that. My roommate builds those. Yeah? Yeah. And you paint them all up and everything? Uh, yes, and most of the ones he gets are, like, pre-painted yeah. as well, so. But there's just something about a model kit one. They feel brittle, like the, mm. the plastic doesn't feel like an action figure. So... A year or two ago, Bandai launched a new line of figures called Gundam Universe. They were six-inch action figures. You know, you didn't have to snap them together or anything. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to collect this line, but I would like to get some of my favorites of the toys I had from the 90s. So I've got four of them so far. This was my fifth. And this guy's name is Master Gundam. Again, I don't know anything about him because I did not have a toy of him in the 90s. This is like a new character I'm not familiar with. And uh, I just thought he looked really cool. I love his big, like, V-shaped head. I like the color scheme on him. Um, he kind of reminds me of... Well, the head, anyway, reminds me of Zero from uh, the Mega Man series. Because he's got, like, these things going off his head. Yeah. But with, I, I mean, kind of cool. He's cool. And, like, so I ordered him months ago on Big Bad Toy Store. And every time I thought about, like, I need to watch my budget, I would look at him and I'm like, I should cancel this pre-order because I have no attachment to this character. I'm not going to cancel my G.I. Joes or my He-Man. I'm like, this guy's the outlier. I should cancel him. But I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I thought he looked so cool. And I'm like, and he was sold out on the website. So if I canceled my pre-order, it's not like I could change my mind and order him back again immediately. Right. So I was like, I think I should stick with him. Because I, from the look of him, I thought this guy was potential to be on my list for best of the year because not only does he look super cool, but also he would probably be the only gun to my get this year, so he's got kind of that unique factor about him. Didn't you get Heavy Arms this year? Um, it was Heavy Arms this year? Maybe so. Um, I feel like it okay, was. Okay, yeah, it probably was. It all, it's all a big toy buying yeah. blur. Um, okay, so yeah, maybe Heavy Arms. But regardless, I wasn't going to have a lot of gun. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I got him. I opened him up. I got him from Big Bad Toy Store the other day. And uh, he feels like a model kit to me. Like, he feels brittle. Like, the plastic <coughs> is really thin, like, on these wings. Like, it's a really thin little plastic, I feel like. And it feels like I can yeah. just break it with my fingers. And his head, like, comes off like nothing. Like, oh. you just blow on it and the head comes off. Um, he didn't come with any weapons. He came with an interchangeable set of hands. So he's got gray fists and he's got these like reflective purple claw hands. I don't know what that's all about, but he's got two of those if I want to display them that way. But that was it. And I feel like the other Gundams I have came with big giant guns and lightsabers and stuff. This guy feels kind of underwhelming to me. He feels cheap. And he doesn't have any accessories. So, I don't know. Yeah, he'll look cool on my shelf just standing there, but I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed by him. Yeah, I picked that one up right on this, too, on this. Yeah. Looking at him. Like, he doesn't feel like you pick up a G.I. Joe or a Marvel Legend yeah, or something. he doesn't have any weight to him. Yeah, there's no weight to him. I feel like if I dropped him on the floor, he'd be a thousand pieces right now. How's that compared to the other ones? I, If I remember correctly, how the arms had not, decent weight. Yeah, the other ones felt, not so much that they had a weight to them, but they felt like... Like real plastic. No. Yeah, this guy feels like hollow. And the other guy's plastic was gummier. Yeah. So if I dropped heavy arms on the floor, I don't feel he would shatter. His head and arms might fall off, but they can snap them back into place. But this guy, I feel he would like shatter like a you know a drinking glass or something. Like he's he feels brittle. So mixed feelings on that. Um, now I have a bunch of transformers, but I don't know. Maybe we've gone late and long enough that I don't know if I really want to get in. Maybe I should save those for another episode. Sure. Um, the last thing then that I will talk about here, I just got this guy yesterday. 
Um, you messaged me and I told you I was going to Walmart because I had a pre-order come in. Ugh. Yeah. I know who it is. So, I previously, in my Marvel Legends collection, had this Lizard figure. So, Lizard is one of Spider-Man's classic villains. You know, he was featured in Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Um, and this is a cool figure. Like, he was a build-a-figure, so you had to buy, like, seven figures to get the tail and the arms and legs. And he's, you know, compared to other Marvel Legends, like, six-inch figures, you can see, like, the size of him. He's, like, girthy. But, uh, something about this figure just never really sat right with me. Like, he looks like a dinosaur. It looks like they took that head right off of, like, something out of Jurassic Park. And Lizard never looked like that. Um, and he wasn't really historically this big hulking thing either. Or dark, that dark of a green. Yeah, like, now there have been lots of different versions of him over the years. A lot of different artist interpretations. I feel like this is, they were maybe trying to go for the Todd McFarlane version where he was a little bit more savage. Yeah. Because some versions of the lizard, he's still smart Mm -hmm. and he's still a scientist. Yeah. And he's, like, trying to use his science brain to, like, convert all the other humans into lizards. But then other times he's just a big lumbering lizard. And this seems to be more the big lumbery lizard guy. But uh, a new version was announced on the Spider-Man retro card. He was the Walmart exclusive. I pre-ordered him on the Walmart website it was back in June or July. He was supposed to arrive in August. He showed up on October 5th or whatever. Anyway, so here he is, he, and I love it. I think he's oh. super cool. So here you can see with that head, it's much more like early Spider-Man, like Steve Ditko inspired, mm-hmm. or like right out of the uh, not just the '90s Spider-Man cartoon, but it, it makes me look think of the like '60s or '70s mm-hmm. Spider-Man cartoon. Um, and like he's just much more humanoid in shape. His colors are brighter, like comparatively, you know they're. Two totally different animals, really. Um, for accessories, he comes with... You see, he's got this beaker of, like... So, again, that leads me to believe this is the more... The smarter version of the lizard. Like, you know, he's yeah. still doing experiments and stuff, even in his lizard form. He was one of my uh, favorite Spider-Man villains. Yeah, he's a great character, and that's a great figure. I'm sad he sold out. Yeah, you'll probably have another shot at him. Yeah. Um, so, besides the red... I don't know the names for my different types of beakers. Maybe you do. But so, besides the red one, which is kind of triangular shape, he's also got this yellow, kind of roundish beaker, which is kind of cool. So, it looks like it's got a yellow liquid inside of there. That one looks like it would go on a Bunsen burner. Yeah. And then he has a couple alternate hands. So, he's got gripping hands and open clawed hands. And then he does have an alternate head. So, this one's a little closer to uh, to this one. And that his tongue is out. It's a little more... It's got like a longer snout. Um, but yeah, I still... That's my favorite head of the two. So, uh, but yeah, it's nice to have the options. Again, this is a little bit more like Mark McFarlane-esque, I think. But uh, anyway, really cool figure. I like him a lot. Yeah, I'm jealous. Comic book in. Now, I collect Amazing Spider-Man. That comes out two or three times a month, and there's not a whole lot to talk about there. It's currently very good. I would recommend you read Amazing Spider-Man if you're not doing it. It's been bad for several years, but it's, it's good now. But this is separate, so they put out Amazing Fantasy uh, 1000. So this comic book really shouldn't exist, like because there is not a thousand issues of Amazing Fantasy but for those of you not familiar, Amazing Fantasy was the like anthology series that Spider-Man first appeared in before he got his own comic book. It was number 15, right? Yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 15 in like 1962 or 3 or whatever. And like right now we're at the like it's the 60 year anniversary of Spider-Man. I actually pre-ordered that figure. Yeah, so this is kind of just an arbitrary number to celebrate the 60 year anniversary of Spider-Man. So I picked this up. It's a thicker book. It's got multiple stories by a different creative team. Some of them are only like a couple of pages. Um, I I didn't love it to be honest. Like I never. I'm not a big fan of these anthology Spider-Man books that feel inconsequential. Like nothing in this book has any. Like they're often like a little feel-good story. Like Spider-Man saves a cat from a tree, and the little kid says, "Thanks, Spider-Man, you're my hero." And it's supposed to like bring a tear to your eye, but it has nothing to do with like the overall storyline to move spider-man forward or anything 
So if you're not a regular comic book collector and you just like want to pick up, you know, something to remind you of the Spider-Man comic books you used to read as a kid or something, this is the kind of thing that's meant for you because you're not going to get bogged down with like what's been going on for the past two years in comic books. It's timeless, but at the same time, for somebody like me, it just feels kind of inconsequential. And honestly, I could have done without it. But as a collector, I couldn't allow myself to pass on it. Um, also, like 30 years ago is when Image Comics mm -hmm. came out. Um, that was when all the best artists in Marvel, there was a big exodus, they all went and started their own company, Image. Todd McFarlane started Spawn. That's really, that and Eric Larson's Savage Dragon are kind of the only books that have continued to this day. Most of the other ones fell off pretty quick. Jim Valentino's new original creation was called Shadowhawk. I bought the first, like, three issues of Shadowhawk back in the 90s. Um, it wasn't that great, to be honest with you. But because it's the 30th anniversary, they're doing a lot of uh, kind of anniversary books of those yeah. those launch books from Image. So there was, like, a new uh, Brigade comic book, a new, like, I think Wildcats, a new Prophet book, all these uh, Image books. So this one here, I thought, this is just a one-shot, and it's supposedly, like, the last Shadowhawk story. I don't know where they left off with Shadowhawk when the book ended after a handful of issues in the 90s if the story just left was left untold or maybe they did put a little ending on it but anyway this is supposed to be kind of all these years later and basically this book is about the death of Shadowhawk he gets kind of beat to death and uh I was kind of like really like after 30 years they bring this back and he basically yeah. it's just yeah he gets his ass kicked all issue there's some inner monologue and uh but I was like that's pretty I found it pretty unsatisfying so anyway whatever this was a new number one I picked up called Vanish. Have you heard about this one? I haven't. Uh, image? So, yeah, it's a new Image number one. And the only reason I picked it up, like, for one, it's got that old-school image -y kind of vibe, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Like, Image was known for its flashy art, but mm -hmm. shitty stories for the most part. This guy looks like the character of the darkness to me. Um, but it's the team. So Donny Cates is the writer. Ryan Stegman is the artist. This is the team that kind of really put Venom on the map yeah. a couple of years ago. Um, Donny Cates has gone on to write, uh, you know, popular runs of Thor and other things. So I thought, okay, well, this is a creator-owned book. I'll give it a shot. And it, the artwork was really nice by Stegman. And the storyline wasn't bad, but it was, wasn't was great either. It's essentially, it's kind of like Harry Potter mixed with, I don't know, with a superhero book, like... It's this, it was a school of magicians, and this, it starts off with this kid, he's a magician, but then cut to the future, now he's like a drunk and a bum, and then he finds out the bad magicians from when he was a kid are back, and he's going to like hunt them down, and it's kind of got a revenge twist on it. And it's got kind of, you know, this dark Spawn-esque vibe to it, but uh, I'm not really a fan of like magicians and stuff, and I don't know if I'll bother coming back for number two. Um, this is another brand new book, um, this one from Boom Studios, I believe, called Briar. Any, uh, sort of that one, anything no. familiar about? This one I didn't know anything about either. It was literally just the, uh, the artwork when I was going through. Every week I kind of check the website of what new comics are coming out so I know exactly what to pick up when I go to the comic book shop. And I scrolled past this one and I was like, okay, like, what's this all about? It looks cool, this chick with a big sword and everything. I like the style of the artwork. And then I saw it was written by Christopher Cantwell, which was actually a turnoff for me. Um... I've read some of his Marvel stuff. He wrote the Doctor Doom series, and he's currently writing Iron Man. And uh, have you read his stuff? Uh, some of the Thor things. I don't know if I've even read his Thor, but uh, I, I haven't been impressed with his yeah. stuff. Um, so <coughs> even though it was Christopher Cantwell, I thought, well, I'll give it a shot based on the artwork. And I actually did enjoy this mm -hmm. book. It's kind of a twist on like a standard fairy tale. Like, it starts off, she's a princess in, essentially, Cinderella's castle, or Sleeping Beauties, because then she gets a curse, and she goes to sleep, and a prince, they find a prince to kiss her to wake her up, but then the prince basically says, in kind of a twist, is like, yeah, but if I wake her up, she's just going to nag me and everything, so why don't we just marry her while she's unconscious, and I'll become the new prince of the kingdom, and that all happens, so she wakes up, oh, oh, she wakes up a hundred years later to find out that while she was asleep, she got married, her new husband joined with her father, and they've raided all these other kingdoms, and then they'd all collapse, and now the kingdom's in ruins, and everything's all overgrown, the castle's toppled over, and she has to kind of find and her I'm way. And I'm assuming her husband's long dead. 
Uh, probably, but I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up in some twist down the road. So this is only the first issue. I don't know if it's an ongoing. I think it's only a mini series. But I liked this one enough that I'll come back for number two. Um, this is an old series. So this is old news. But like Strange Adventures by Comic Shop. Whenever they get uh, little bundles of comic books in, they put them up on their Instagram. And they had the like Batman Shadow crossover. Yeah. Um, this is, I think, probably close to 10 years old. Uh, 2017 it's numbered there. Um, anyway... I like, I like Batman. I don't collect him regularly, but this is the kind of thing I could get into because it's a six-issue, one-and-done, and I do like the shadow. I am kind of a sucker for these kind of weird crossovers. For Anyway, I thought it was pretty boring, though, to be honest with you. It wasn't very good. Plus, I learned as I was reading it that this was the second crossover, which is not un uncommon. So when you get two companies that agree to merge their characters, they kind of say, okay, well, DC, you can publish a six-issue miniseries called you know, Batman and the Shadow. But meanwhile, Dynamite's going to publish this six-issue series called The Shadow and Batman. And kind of the diff their own hero kind of is the, the star of yeah. either side. And so as I was reading this, I learned this is the second of the two crossovers. So I was already a little lost, and I didn't really care for it. But Speaking of crossovers, I am optimistically hoping that the Spawn Batman one is pretty good. Yep. Greg... Capullo is very good at drawing monsters, so I've got high hopes for this one. So, is it, like, is it got Killer Croc in it or something? Monster? -wise? I'm not sure too much right now. At this point, they're kind of keeping it under wraps. But they did that exact same thing that I'm talking about back in the '90s. They did yeah. a, they did Batman Spawn, and they did two books. One of them was like by Frank Miller, yeah, and then the other one was by I think. Was it Todd McFarlane and Frank Miller that did one book, I think? And I believe then, so. And then a less exciting creative team did the other version. And uh, anyway, I have them both, but neither of them really stick out in my head all that much. So now, 30 years later, they're doing another team up. Hopefully it's good. I might buy the first issue and then see how that goes. Yeah. Um, the last series here I was going to talk about, this is this is all five issues. Uh, so I, I double up my bags and boards to kind of save me some space. But this is a series called Hit Me. Um, this is another one that I just took a chance on. It was kind of the art, like the cover art, and I kind of caught me, and I was like, what's this all about? It's by AWA, which is a relatively new uh, comic book company. Uh, it's named after Alex Alonzo, who was a long time, uh, he worked for Marvel for a long time, he went off and started his own. Sorry, the dog is pushing me around here. I forgot Casey was there. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm kind of leaning all forward, because <laughs> the dog is basically taking up the whole chair here behind me. <laughs> Get out of my chair, Mike. Yeah, so basically I bought the first issue of this when it first came out, like six, seven months ago. And it's about, it's kind of like a true, not, well, it's not true, but it's a crime story. It's kind of a lot like what you know, the, the work of Ed Brubaker and stuff, if you've yeah, ever read this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this one. And so she, it's like a dominatrix that kind of gets caught up in like one of her clients gets murdered. She takes the money that was in the hotel room and... But then the other bad guys want the money, and so now she's on the run. There's two different groups chasing her. And I thought the first issue was interesting enough that I thought, you know what? Since this is a one-and-done, five-issue miniseries, I would prefer to have the trade paperback collection. Yeah. So I bought the first issue, and I didn't buy the next four, and then I was going to wait till the trade came out. Um, and so then it showed up on the solicitation that it was coming out like a couple, like two or three weeks ago. So I showed up to my comic shop expecting to get it. But they didn't order it in, and I was like, okay, well now I guess I'll just never read it. And then I, but then I checked on the shelf, and they had issues two, three, four, five still there. So I was like, oh fuck it, I'll just. So I ended up buying them all as individual issues. And anyway, it was a decent story, but at the same time, not much happened to make it stand out. It wasn't very original, if not for the uh, the nice artwork and kind of the s and m twist to you know drawing the pervs and stuff there wasn't a whole lot here to it that i can really recommend it but it was okay so there you go that was comic book corner for today for today all right well i think we probably came close to an hour here yeah i think we stopped at 36 minutes last time okay so we're so. probably over an hour again so <coughs> thank you if you stuck with us this whole time much appreciated um, so we'll wrap it up. We'll be back soon with another one. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And subscribe, yeah. Um, so yeah, do all that stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao. Keep collecting.